Welcome to the North Okanagan, a scenic region where grasslands and lakes mix to create a stunning landscape. With a population of over 77,000 people, this region has seen dramatic growth over the last century. Vernon is continuing to grow and expand. Modern buildings and resorts are adding to the urban landscape. Vernon is known for its beautiful hot, dry summers, bringing in thousands of tourists every year. The result of this semi-arid climate is that one important resource is harder to come by. That resource is water. With major droughts in recent years, we need to examine how we are to manage this precious resource in order to accommodate sustainable growth. On average, the North Okanagan receives about 100 centimeters of snow each winter. But the winter of 2009 was much different. In 2010, uh, the uh, lake levels were at about 40% of normal and that was uh, quite a bit lower than we'd seen over the past uh, probably 13 years of our studies and um, our snowpack was 56 percent of normal in March and so we had two large components of understanding how much water we have for the summer season they were both extremely low The drought response team was formed um, after we went to the, the board and to GVAC. We um, felt it was important that we went to our stage three restrictions. We felt we did not have enough water to go through a, a hot summer. If that was going to be the case, we wouldn't have enough supply. Some of the things within stage three water restrictions were never used before. We'd never gone to that stage before. So when we did, there was a large uh, flashback from, from the community. So the drought response team was in response to uh, the community saying to us, hey, this, this, isn't, this isn't working. This team consisted of members of the community, local businesses that were directly affected by the watering restrictions, also government agencies, people from the agricultural sectors as well. Some of these recommendations were to go from a four day a week to a three day a week watering schedule, as well as adding one more stage to the watering restrictions to basically soften the effects of the drought as it would progress throughout the year. Uh, other recommendations that were brought forward were to do a bit of an educational campaign as well to let people know proper landscaping techniques, proper mowing techniques, as well as to encourage people to do irrigation audits of their, of their sprinkler systems to make sure that everything is operating efficiently. As part of this educational campaign, we also recommended that xeriscaping be promoted as well in the community. Xeriscaping is uh, when we try to uh, take an existing lawn area and uh, reduce the amount of uh, water consumption primarily on a, uh, on a landscape and uh, typically you do that in, in various ways but uh, one, is, one is obvious one is reducing lawn um, which is a, is a very heavy water consumer. Other things we try to do as well is increase uh, landscape beds, so using a lot of drought tolerant uh, varieties of plants, um, using uh, drip irrigation, um, also uh, installing irrigation systems as well that, uh, that monitor your, uh, your water, water consumption and, uh, and things to that effect. So. By making some of these changes to reduce water in our backyards, we can help maintain a healthy water supply for the community and be more prepared for dry years in the future. We can continue to move forward in our communities by good water management practices and look forward to a bright future.